Hey everyone, let's explore how to automatically schedule a list of work orders with resource scheduling optimization to minimize travel time for your field technicians. In this video, we will take a group of work orders in the Washington State Service Territory and automatically schedule them to field technicians in that same territory. After resource scheduling optimization, also called RSO, is installed, you will see it as a new app in your Dynamics 365 for field service environment. Resource scheduling optimization builds on top of resource scheduling and field service, so you must have those two apps installed first if you want to optimize work orders. If you go to the app, you will see RSO specific entities like schedules, requests, scopes, and goals, as well as resource scheduling entities like resources, requirements, and the schedule board. The first step is to enable the solution. Go to Resource Scheduling Settings, then Administration, and then Scheduling Parameters. In the Resource Scheduling Optimization tab, set Enable Resource Scheduling Optimization to Yes to turn on RSO for this environment. Next, select a default goal. A default goal is shipped with RSO, and among other uses, it tells RSO what to prioritize by default, such as maximizing working hours. If no default goal is present, select New and create one. Here is a recommended setting. Next, head to Booking Statuses and ensure your field service booking statuses have a scheduling method. This tells RSO how to treat bookings depending on their status. As an example, if a field technician is traveling to a work order, RSO should not move that booking, so the scheduling method is set to do not move. Next, let's start picking a list of work orders we want to optimize the schedules for. We do this by creating a system view that filters for the work order requirements. Head to Settings and then Customizations to create a new system view. This view will be for the resource requirement entity, not work orders because resource requirements are what's actually scheduled. Here is an example of a view we already created. In this case, we want to filter resource requirements that relate to work orders in the Washington State Service Territory. When you're done, don't forget to save and publish your new view. Next, we will ensure the requirements in this view are eligible for optimization. In the sitemap, we'll head to Resource Requirements and then find the view we just created. Then we'll highlight and do a bulk edit. For all of these records, we'll set the scheduling method to Optimize. You can also have the system automatically set work order requirements to Optimize by default when a work order requirement is created. This is done in Booking Setup Metadata. Go back to Resource Scheduling Administration, then select Enable Resource Scheduling for Entities. Double click on Work Order and set Default Scheduling Method to Optimize. So at this point, we have a list of work orders we want to optimize, but now we need to choose resources we want to schedule them to. We do this in the same way as before by creating a filtered system view. Back in Settings, go to the Bookable Resource Entity and create a new view. Here is an example of a view that we have already created that is filtered. In this case, we want to filter bookable resources that are part of the Washington State Service Territory. Next, let's set these partition resources as eligible for optimization. We'll head to the bookable resources first, and on each bookable resources form, there is a field called Optimize Schedule. Set this to Yes. This can be done individually for each resource in your view or through a bulk edit. Now that we have enabled RSO, and have a list of work order requirements and resources, 
we can begin setting up RSO. Go to the Resource Scheduling Optimization app and create an optimization scope. Enter a name that describes the requirements and resources you are optimizing. In the Resources and Unscheduled Requirements for this optimization section, select the Resource view and the Requirement view you created in the previous steps. In the Bookings for this optimization section, select the Active Bookable Resource Bookings view or a similar view for bookings. By entering a view for unscheduled requirements and bookings, we are configuring RSO to optimize both unscheduled jobs and scheduled jobs, but you have the options to schedule either or both. Set range duration to two days. This means RSO will schedule requirements to fill up a maximum of two days. Set range offset to five minutes. This means the first bookings RSO can schedule will be five minutes after the time RSO is run. Some organizations would like RSO to schedule jobs starting tomorrow, in which case the range offset should be set to one day. Then save. The next step is to create goals or objectives for your RSO run. Go to Optimization Goals in the left pane and then select New. Enter a name that describes the goal, and for engine effort level, choose Very Light. This means RSO will run very quickly, but may not find the global optimal solution. For constraints, select Working Hours, Characteristics, and Territory. This ensures only field technicians in the Washington State Territory will be scheduled to requirements in that same territory. Though there are more constraints, it is best to start with fewer and add more as you successfully run RSO. This way it is easier to troubleshoot if RSO produces unexpected results or none at all. For objectives, select the following order. Maximize total working hours, minimize total travel time, best matching skill level. Note that minimize total travel time cannot be the first objective. The last configuration step is to combine your scope and goal into a schedule. Go to Optimization Schedules in the left pane and then select New. Enter a name that will define your schedule, such as Overnight Schedule. Select in the lookup to the scope and goal you just created in the previous steps. Then set timer to one hour. This is how often RSO will check to see if it should run. Enter valid from and valid to dates. Because we plan to run RSO manually, we will enter dates in the past. However, if you want to run RSO automatically more frequently, such as every night, enter the dates you'd like it to run every night. And then enter a time in the filter section. One example would be midnight. Then save and publish. After the schedule is published, test RSO by selecting your schedule and clicking Run Now in the ribbon. You can have multiple RSO schedules running at different times and optimizing different requirements and resources. When you run RSO, an optimization request record is created. It will let you know when an RSO run is submitted, currently optimizing, or complete. Once the optimization request status is completed, meaning it has run successfully, you can view the results. In the Bookings tab, you will see a list of bookings created or deleted and a graph of the total travel time and total working time of the optimized bookings. Next, you can go to the schedule board to see the optimized work orders. A new schedule board tab named after your scope is automatically created. The yellow bars indicate the beginning and ending time ranges of the optimization. In our case, it's two days from the time RSO is run. A simple example of RSO optimizing travel time is when there is no travel time between two bookings. This means there were two work orders at the same location with the same service account and RSO scheduled them back to back. It is possible RSO will return unexpected results 
or no results at all. Here are a few things you can do to troubleshoot. First, ensure your resources are working during the RSO time range. You can check their working hours on the schedule board. If you run RSO on a Friday, but your resources are not working Saturday or Sunday, it will not schedule anything. Next, ensure your resources have the skills the requirements are asking for. A simple way to test this is to take a requirement in your optimization view and attempt to schedule it with the schedule assistant and see if your resources are returned. If the schedule assistant cannot schedule it, then RSO definitely will not be able to. If you're just getting started with RSO, you may want to remove the characteristic constraint altogether and work up to it. As mentioned earlier in this video, ensure your resources and requirements are eligible for optimization. Every requirement that you want to automatically schedule must be flagged. Here is the field on the requirement that must be set to optimize. There is a similar field on the resource record too called optimize schedule. Make sure this field is set to yes. It is also common to get an error regarding permissions. Ensure your user has the resource scheduling optimization security role. And if you still get errors, consider giving your user system administrator, at least for testing and development purposes. Finally, if you believe something is wrong that you cannot fix, consider resetting RSO. Go to your optimization schedules view and select reset all. This can take a few minutes.